Once upon a time, a city nestled in the mountains, a satyr rogue fell in love with a seamstress, and they were married. After some time, they had a child, a baby satyr born with hair the gray-blue of a mountain lake, and fluffy ears the color of melting snow. They named her Moriana, after a nymph who could calm the sea and who was beloved of the sun. Moriana grew up sweet and intelligent, always curious about the world around her and the people in it. The happy family grew with four children following Moriana. Lena, the next born, was brave and adventurous. Orest was born sickly, but was thoughtful and just. Castroma was mischievous and clever. And Mikhail, the youngest? Well, to Moriana, he was the most special child to ever be born. Sadly, sometimes good fortune brings bad along with it. Moriana's mother died giving birth to Mikhail. Moriana, not even a teenager at the time, found herself in a new role in their little family. Her father worked hard to provide for the children and Moriana became a mother figure. Moriana never forgot her mother's teachings of kindness and love. She strove to make everyone, especially her siblings, feel seen and cared for. While this made for a life full of responsibility, it was not without joy. About a year later, a small family with a girl as old as Moriana moved in next door. The new girl, Ollie, and Moriana grew to be friends. They played, adventured, and babysat together. Ollie helped Moriana find her way and reminded her of how to be a kid. And Moriana helped Ollie with classes and shared with her endless stories and fairy tales. Eventually, the two young women fell in love, but they were both shy and afraid of rejection. So this love went unspoken. Things reached a sort of peace as Moriana and her siblings grew up. Moriana had a passion for learning and helping people. She could be found often in the sick wards taking care of the injured or in the library. Otherwise, she could be found anywhere where there was a good story to be heard or one to be told. Her brothers and her sisters grew up happy and her father was kind. While Moriana loved magic, her resources to learn it were few and far between, and she had no natural knack for it as a sorcerer might. As clever as she was, friends often said she should go off to school somewhere to learn wizardry, but she refused. She couldn't leave her family. Her responsibilities to her loved ones always came first. With magic out of reach, she began to express interest in combat so that she could protect her home like one of the gallant knights of her stories. Although it was a second choice, she contented herself with it. For her, the most important thing was family. When she was 17, a fairy tale came to life in the form of a carnival visiting town. This was the famed Witch Light Carnival. Stories were told of it everywhere, and children all over the city begged to go. Moriana, Ollie, and their brothers Nick and Mikhail went to the carnival together on its last day in town. It felt like a day they would remember forever. As the evening ended and it was time to return home, Nick pulled Moriana aside, conspiring to surprise Ollie with a gift. Moriana happily agreed and the two snuck off. However, a moment of distraction in the rush of crowds separated the two of them. Moriana searched high and low for Nick, or for Ollie and Mikhail, but the more she looked, the more lost she became. She was searching for help and found a woman dressed as a carnival worker who bid her to follow. Moriana, always believing in the best intentions of all she met, happily followed along. Even as they seemed to reach a secluded, closed area of the carnival, Moriana kept her faith. And as the woman stepped through a mirror, promising Nick was somewhere past the surface of it, Moriana had no choice but to follow. If it was true, she couldn't leave Nick alone. But it was Moriana who found herself alone. She stepped through the mirror, transported through a planar rift into the Feywild. The landscapes, plants, and creatures were foreign and at times terrifying. Moriana was alone and lost, and she found that she could neither get home nor find her way. Even Ollie's lessons in following the stars and the sun proved useless, as the sky in the Feywild was eternally twilight and the stars were nowhere to be seen. The Feywild, a place of strong emotions, reacted violently to her despair. Flowers wilted when she cried, and vines reached out to ensnare her when she was afraid. Each misstep resulted in being more lost. After long days spent lost, Moriana learned a truth of the Feywild. The plane seemed to punish her unhappiness, 
and reward whatever joys she found. So she strove to find joy, pushing away every moment of fear, sadness, or anger. As she pushed herself to find the joy in every circumstance, joy followed. Flowers bloomed, trees bore fruit, and a way was made for her. Finally, she found a path, and while it did not lead home, it led to a place of legends. Moriana found the palace of the Archfey, whose domain she was lost in. Summoning her courage, she sought counsel with the Archfey and was given an opportunity. In exchange for four years of education in magic, and then four years serving as captain of the palace guard, Moriana would be returned safely to the material plane. To Moriana, who grew up enamored with fairy tales and magic, this sounded like the opportunity of her dreams. She gave eight years of schooling and service to the Archfey, but could not contact her home. Still, she was happy. Mariana truly enjoyed her time and everything she learned. She became a skilled wizard and learned the technique of blade singing. In return, she protected the Archfey and became like an adoptive daughter to her. Nearing the end of the eighth year of her service, the Archfey dismissed Mariana abruptly. Mariana, distressed and confused, was left at a portal to the material plane and deposited in Jorhas, far from her home. She wandered around the waste, getting lost at each turn. Finally, she found a large city, Rosanna. She tried to find an inn or a store, but, as if by magic, continued to find herself outside of a pumpkin farm. After five times of returning to the place on accident, she entered the farmer's cottage. To her great surprise, the farmer was meeting with a group of others. Not wanting to interrupt, Moriana went to leave. But as she did, she noticed one of the others looked so familiar. It was Ollie. The two women reunited happily, and Moriana was introduced to the group of adventurers that Ollie traveled with, the Silver Falls Six. Maybe this is where the story should end, with a young satyr named Moriana reunited with her dearest friend. Sadly, it does not. Moriana did not know two things, both of which would change her life forever. The first is what she would learn from Ollie that night. While Moriana was gone, each member of her family had died, one by one, falling to monsters and murderers and illness. Only Mikhail was still thought to be alive, but he had gone missing nearly a year ago. The other thing she did not know was that the Silver Falls Six had made some powerful enemies in their travels. These enemies had hired mercenaries to kill them, and the Silver Falls Six awoke to the tavern on fire and foes in their rooms. They all tried to regroup to fight off the mercenaries as the tavern burned around them. However, the combination of the surprise and the deadly fires proved too much. One by one, Moriana and the Silver Falls Six were killed. That was the story of Moriana the Satyr. She found herself quite dead in the realms of the afterlife. As she expected to pass, she was joined by a shadow of a legendary dark witch, <laughs> Igwilv the Witch Queen, known also by her name of Tasha, promised Moriana a second chance at life for a small debt. The exact terms were unknown to Moriana, to be collected upon at a time of Tasha's choosing. Despite reservations and fears, Moriana accepted that deal and was reborn. Once upon a time, in a bed next to the resurrected body of her childhood love, Moriana, the Hexblood, drew her first breath. <laughs>